Hey. Hi, can you hear me now? I can. Can you hear me? I can. Awesome. Hey, good to nice. see you. Nice to meet you. Do you pronounce your name Tanya? It's Tani, actually. Tani. Okay. Yeah. Tani. Yep. Just rhymes with Connie. Got it. Yeah. Meet you in the flesh. <laughs> sort yeah, of. Sort of. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I love your prints on the wall there over your piano. Oh, thanks. That's a, I'm a violinist. That's my, yeah, I do like that poster. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. That's actually my violin hanging on my wall. <laughs> oh, wonderful. So do you play yeah. piano too? I play piano for my students. Um, I accompany them to a certain degree and then they have to find a better accompanist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I understand that. <laughs> yeah. How about you? What is your instrument? What do you like to do? Um, I play trumpet. That's that's the only one that I'm relatively adept at. The others, I just, I don't know, I can't even really, say, we say piddling in the South. I can't even really say I piddle at those, though. Um, I do <laughs> put them up. Every, I have a piano. Um, I know how to, I mean, like, I know the basics, but I am a terrible, terrible um, pianist. I, I have no coordination in my hands and, and playing with two hands is, I can do okay with right hand, but if I try to add in left, then it's terrible. Yeah, I know. I'm kind of, I quit piano lessons to start on the violin when I was a kid. And so um, my right hand's pretty well developed, but my right. left hand's not. So I become a master at faking piano parts <laughs> <laughs> just to help them out, you know, before they yeah. get to the real companies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I um I teach K2 music, so that's what oh, I do for my cool. day job. <clears throat> and um it would be a lot better if I played better, but I don't. And so um whenever we do programs, like I have to find things that have an accompaniment already made or sure. something that we do a cappella or we just, mm -hmm. you know, kind of do rhythm stuff. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's been a little challenging. I I probably should. I should probably work at getting better, but honestly, there's just absolutely no time. <laughs> right. Schedule is slammed. So yeah. yeah. Now where whereabouts do you live? I'm in North Carolina. Oh, okay. Down in the southeastern corner, almost at the South Carolina line. We're about an hour inland from the coast. Okay. So I don't know how familiar you are with with this area, but not not very familiar. I've okay. probably driven like what, as a kid maybe uh -huh. traveled through there but gotcha certainly have not visited that area <laughs> in a long <laughs> time remember. sounds like yeah that i can remember anyway so right yeah we're um it's it's flatlands here and um like i said we're about an hour inland from the coast we can be at one of the beaches in about 45 minutes anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour and a half depending on you know which section of, of beach we want to go to mm -hmm. yeah you'd think we'd go more often we don't <laughs> <laughs> yeah we probably should but we don't yeah well you're probably so busy <laughs> it is it's a it's a busy busy schedule how about you where are you geographically so i'm so i live in washington state oh but okay on the dry side of the state so most people associate washington state with rain because it rains a lot in seattle but i live six hours from seattle okay on yeah on the eastern side of the state so i'm actually very close to the idaho border okay i'm yeah. seven miles away so we're like kind of the same community and i actually teach my my violin and viola studios actually umbrellaed under the university of idaho oh interesting yeah so we do all we're like our group classes and recitals there um yeah but i teach this where i'm sitting right now is my home studio okay in pullman washington okay so we were in um actually my first visit to washington was um this summer and we went to seattle we took a train trip around country um train trip we flew out of atlanta to chicago and stayed two nights there took amtrak over to seattle spent two nights and days in mm -hmm. seattle and then another train down to la stayed two nights there in los angeles mm -hmm. and then two um two nights and days there and then another amtrak over to new orleans 
and then just went directly to the airport because we had done New Orleans before and that was mm -hmm. that was enough in the summer for me. I <laughs> wanted to take that Amtrak line actually that you're talking about. Was it good? Was it it was it, it it was it was really an excellent trip um the only thing we were just it was so long like we were we were gone for two weeks and and like half of that time was actually on the train and so those are really long stints hmm. so hmm. like you're on the train one the last leg of the train trip we were actually on the train for about 56 hours hmm. straight and we had the little roommates which are nice um, but if you're doing a long, uh, that long of a trip, like it just, there's just not a lot of room and there's not right. a lot of, um, yeah, it's, yeah, <laughs> it's just pretty tight, but it was, it was really, really fun. And the scenery was absolutely, uh, breathtaking. And the, the part from Seattle down to LA, that, that coastline, um, was, I think the starlight coast or something mm -hmm. like something like that <clears throat> like the scenery on that trip was absolutely spectacular it was beautiful mm -hmm. yeah so I definitely recommend that leg of it for sure the leg from Chicago to Seattle was also really lovely um mm -hmm. lots of really beautiful scenery there too the one from LA to New Orleans is just really long and it's mm -hmm. a lot of similar scenery like there's not a lot of variation Sure. Um, so yeah, that, it was not my favorite part, but the others were just really, really wonderful. Yeah. It was a good trip. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you teach students privately and that's, that's your day job. That's my day job through the university of Idaho. Okay. Um, like I said, I, um, I'm, there are a few teachers in my community who are umbrellaed through their music department. Uh -huh. So, yeah, so, um, and then um, I play in the Washington, Idaho Symphony. Nice. Um, and, yeah, and then I guess now I write books, too. Yeah, apparently you do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I didn't, didn't plan on that happening, but um, I did, so. Well, how did that happen if that wasn't part of your plan? Well, okay, to be honest, my husband, um, I tell it's his fault. I tell him that this happened. <laughs> he he loves to write as a hobby. Um, uh -huh. He publishes his own books. Uh, okay. He does the indie publishing. publishing. Um, but I got kind of tired of him doing that all the time that I thought, well, my, you know, maybe I'll just join him. <laughs> I'll yeah. try something, right? Yeah. So actually I started writing just, I, I had a dream. Uh, it was a very musical dream and it had to do with Vivaldi. Um, I won't go into that, it's a long story, but um, Antonio Vivaldi. <laughs> and I woke up and I was telling him my dream. He goes, that sounds like a children's book. And that's when I started. Okay. So that's, that, that manuscript did not get purchased. <laughs> uh -huh. But my second book that I started, started on I got obsessed with it's called in one ear and out the other and it's right behind me I put it up on my piano here so you can see it um that one did get picked up by a publisher and so oh, nice. um that kind of got me hooked uh to this <laughs> way of sort of you know the musical uh passion and now this kind of writing side by side yes uh, is yes. it's fun yeah it is. Yeah, I can really relate to that because I noticed that um <clears throat> so I as a musician and a music teacher and a teach so I taught second grade for 17 years before I switched over to music and I kind of came in the back door of music. I have an associate degree in music and then I have some additional classes beyond that, but I couldn't decide what I wanted to be when I grew up, so <laughs> I did I tried a few different things and I ended up with a degree that qualified me to do absolutely nothing. It was a bachelor's in arts and humanities, like literally qualifies me to do nothing. <clears throat> and so mm -hmm. I, um, I worked at the library here in my hometown for about three years. And then my husband moved us to Georgia, where he's from. 
and we worked in his family. They had opened a daycare center, so we worked there with them, and the opportunity came up while we were there for me to go back and get my master's, and so I went and got my master's in early childhood education and got my certification to teach um, pre-K through fifth grade, and then um, at that point, I, I taught second grade for 17 years. Mm. And then our music teacher retired. And it was just a particularly difficult year for me, um, mostly related to parents, mostly paperwork. I mean, the, the education system is just fatally flawed, in my opinion. I mean, mm -hmm. um, but so there was a lot of other factors. But the main factor was I just had a really, really terrible year and I needed a break. And when the music teacher announced she was retiring, I thought, oh, wouldn't it be wonderful to sing and dance with kids all day long and not have <laughs> to deal with their parents? And so, yeah, that, so, I know I used to teach in the public schools, actually oh, did you? Teach, um, music in the public schools before yeah. I I went private. But um, there are other challenges. There are other challenges. <laughs> there are, and not everybody gets that. It's it's wonderful that you do because not everybody understands that. But um, right. <laughs> but it was a different challenge, and I I needed that at the time. So it was um it was a great move, and I have never looked back. There are things I miss about the regular classroom. I, I miss having my kids because we don't have kids of our own, and so those kind of became like my little my little surrogate kids, like I was their day mom, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah. So I really miss that sometimes, but mm -hmm. I don't miss the paperwork and I don't miss the daily uh, um, having to deal with parents and mm -hmm. on that level at this yeah. point, you know, I do give grades. And so I have parents that contact me at the midterm and at the end of the nine weeks or yeah. you know, report cards go home or when we have a program, um, but it's just much less. It's it's much, much less that I have to deal with the parents. And um, I have a lot more freedom and, and a lot less paperwork. So it's it's a win-win. It, it's a good place for me to be right now. So yeah, I love it. I, we have a program, our first program coming up. In fact, it's the first program since before COVID. Mm. Um, yeah. So I'm yeah, I'm a little out of practice and feeling a little, a little stressed but I think it's going to be okay. <laughs> just to be back to face to face. It's just a whole different experience. We have a, I have a recital tomorrow with my students. So it's not really a recital, it's sort of a, a fall festival kind of thing that we're right. doing uh, with our instruments and everything. And it'll be the first time that we've actually had cookies and things like that right. yeah. <laughs> since COVID. So right. I'm, I'm like, Oh, I forget how to deal with all that. <laughs> I know. Yeah. 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 I had to look back in my files to see, okay, what am I missing that I used to do when I was getting ready for a program? Because I don't really, I'm not sure I remember everything. So we'll see. It's November the 8th. So hopefully I haven't forgotten anything like majorly <laughs> important. Majorly. Yeah. yeah. But the kids are excited. This is first grade. They're going to be doing... I'm calling it a tale of threes. And so we're doing the Billy Goat's Gruff and the three <laughs> little pigs and the three bears and the three nice. little kittens. So Love yeah, it. it should be pretty fun. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, um, are you ready to let's get official? Sure. Okay. So um, this was a lovely, I always enjoy the pre-chat and the post-chat as much as I do the, <laughs> the um, actual interview. Before we do start with the official, um, do you have any questions for me or anything that you're not sure about? No, I, I just ask me what you want to ask. I mean, I, I, I have your questions here, so I kind of, you know, I have an idea of how I answer them, but it might be different than what I, I I'll just tell you what. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love candid conversations. Absolutely. I much prefer the conversational, but I do like to give you guys a kind of a heads up, you know, sure. the kind of things I'm going to be asking. And sometimes I think of something um, that I didn't think of when I was sending those to you. And I, so I may sure. send something on you. Yeah. But. And if I get off the rails on a question, cause I just get like, you know, on another tangent, just stop me and tell me. I understand, but I think we'll be fine. I mean, and sometimes those tangents, you know, one of the things I love about this is um, 
that every interview kind of takes on its own timbre and it kind of ends up it has a, its own little theme that kind of bubbles to the surface and and it's just so fun to hear that develop um as we're talking because I don't know I don't know what that's yeah I don't know be. I don't know either I just kind of have a general yeah. idea of what I might say <laughs> yeah ask me questions I just think that's really fun it's one of the it's one of the creative and fun parts of of doing um doing this that I'm doing now which I really enjoy mm -hmm. um Okay, well, I'm going to do a little official welcome and then we and your book is launching November 15th. Is that right? Actually, no, it's been delayed. It's marching. Okay. It's uh, launching on November 22nd. Okay, gotcha. Officially. Gotcha. Okay, perfect. Make that adjustment here. 11, 22, 22. That sounds That's like right. it might be a good luck kind of a number. I hope so. Yeah. That sounds great. <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay. Um, good morning or good afternoon whenever you are joining us for PB Jams. We're so excited that you are here. I'm here with Diane Worthy today, and we're going to be talking about her book that's coming up in November. So you can't get it yet, but you'll soon be able to get your hands on it. And it is called Rise Up With the Song, The True Story of Ethel Smith, Suffragette Composer. So, um, yeah, just a really fabulous um, picture book biography. Um, about this amazing composer. And so welcome, Diane. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having me. It's fun. I'm looking forward to talking with you. Yeah, super exciting. Um, so let's see, I had my questions and I set them aside. Um, so we'll just kind of wing it here. But we'll um, <laughs> just talk to us a little bit about the process for writing this book, maybe the inspiration and how this particular book came to be. Okay, so this is my second picture book for kids. Um, and so I would say that the inspiration for this Rise Up With a Song kind of came inspired by my first book because when I started writing books for kids, I wanted to write about women in classical music who have been underrepresented in history. I'm a classical musician. I'm a um, violinist and a uh, violin teacher and I play in the symphony, my local symphony here in Pullman, Washington. And um, I think that the second the second book came on the heels of my first book because I was trying to think of who else can I highlight in a book for kids about a woman who maybe no one's never heard of before who yeah. made huge con contributions to um, classical music. So that's where the inspiration, um, I think, came for the second book. However, when I was trying to think about who to write about, there's there were many choices because um, I, I wanted to continue doing the picture book biography genre because that's what I felt like I was I'm beginning to learn how to do. <laughs> Since yeah. I had one successful book, I thought maybe I should kind of stick with that same right. genre for a, to try for a second one. And so anyway, I went round and round with different women composers because there's so many that made huge contributions and yeah. uh that i want to highlight but ethel smythe um she just has this feisty uh characteristic about her um i i think of it as her spirit uh, a yeah. feisty spirit and some of the things she did as a kid and through her life um just made me think this could make a good um children's book and if you want me to be specific about what those things were that drew me in. Yeah, that's fine. Sure. Um, so I started uh, my first book. I knew the person that I wrote about. And oh. so it was a little different with the research, although um, I couldn't talk to her. I kind of had an idea of where to start to, to look. But with Ethel right. Smythe, I was like, how do I find out? just maybe what she was thinking uh, when she was writing her music. And I was interested in finding memoirs. And uh -huh. I found that Ethel Smythe did write a series of memoirs. And she wrote oh. 10 volumes. Wow. Uh, <laughs> about her life. Partly this was because she became deaf later on in her life and she turned to writing instead of composing. So she was quite prolific as an author as well so i went to her memoirs and the first few memoirs 
she speaks, she talks a lot about her childhood. And that's where I could see this feisty uh, characteristic in her. Um, she talks about uh, taking a dare from her brother to ride on back of their pet pig <laughs> around right. the farmyard. Right. Um, she, she talks about her, she would get in trouble for climbing garden walls uh, to reach for forbidden fruit. She called it forbidden fruit. <laughs> um, she also um, had a fear of graveyards. And so in the middle of the night, she would sneak out of the house to the family graveyard, which was not very far away from the house and walk through the graveyard in the dark at night just to see if she could get over her fear wow uh, graveyards and she was constantly in trouble um at school um her parents actually had to send her to a, a boarding school along with her sister uh and um i was like this woman was feisty yes, <laughs> what else did i find out about her and so anyway um so i could see this story arc happening where yeah. she, you know she was uh discouraged from studying music by her parents especially her father Right. Um, who in in the book you'll see um, is trying to knock the door down to her bedroom because she's locked herself inside the bedroom because she's like, I am going to go to music conservatory and, <laughs> you know, you can't stop me. And he and he's like, um, I don't want my daughter to be a musician. You know, <laughs> he's he's quite adamant that she not do that. Um, so anyway, I could see this story arc um in her and then also there's a scene where um well she she stops composing for a while and she joins the um suffragist movement in britain and um alongside emmeline pankhurst and they were militant suffragettes and they were throwing rocks through windows to be arrested they wanted to go to prison to sh to um bring attention to their plight of you know yeah women deserve the right to vote. And, um, and so um, she is seen by, um, it was actually a uh, conductor friend of hers, came to visit her at prison. And as he walks in the, the courtyard, he looks up and he sees her conducting with a toothbrush out her <laughs> window of the prison. Uh, there were women gathered below that were um, singing her March of the Women, which was her signature suffragette song that she composed. Mm -hmm. um, she did not write the lyrics to it, but she, um, Cecily Hamilton did that, but she wrote the music to it. And so, um, yeah, she was conducting outside uh, the window, hanging her arm out and using her toothbrush as a baton. And so I could see all these things like, you know, maybe this would be a good kid's book. <laughs> Yeah, lots of visuals and visually appealing. Yeah, scenes. lots of scenes, you know, yeah, visual scenes. Yeah. And so evidently this publisher agreed. So yeah, I, yeah, that's how the inspiration came about anyway. Um, but yeah, the drafting process, I I went to her memoirs and um, I just like to go to the originals, try to find original sources if you're doing a biography because um, you can read a lot about what other people say about somebody, but when you see find their own words, yeah, that's when it gets to be like, I think I can maybe try to get some of her spirit into this, yeah, the spicy spirit in here. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, wonderful. So you've you've mentioned a little bit about the musical connections already because obviously she was um, a composer and um and and wrote lots of amazing music and did end up um you know studying music right she. She, went she on did. Yeah. She she went to Leipzig Conservatory for for a year, um, and but here's the thing: it was she considered it too boring. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she was bored. She did, and she's like, you know what? I'm just gonna go off on my own, and um, and and so she started studying with um a pianist that Brahms Johannes Brahms worked with, mm -hmm. and um started kind of walking in these circles of you know. Brahms and Claire Schumann and getting to know them, but she, her classmates at Leipzig Conservatory were um, household names, you know, like Tchaikovsky, Edward Grieg, um, Paul Hindemith, uh, and those were her classmates. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. 
So beyond those, those um, very obvious things, or, or if you want to talk more about any of those, any additional musical connections um, that show up in the book or anything else music related that you'd like to speak to? Um, well, basically, because this is a picture book biography, I really wanted to be true to Ethel Smythe. Like I, I didn't want to impose any of my own experiences there, but I, I would say that um, the, the, I think the reason why I, I really wanted to write about her is because of this theme of not knowing about women and their contributions to music. And so, <clears throat> for instance, um, when I was in uh, music school, getting my degree in music, we never, we took tons of history classes, music history classes, but we never studied about any women. I can't really? remember a single one. I would have to find my original textbook and go back and see if there actually were any, maybe Clara Schumann. Uh, right, that's the first one that comes to my mind. Maybe Fanny Mendelssohn was mentioned once. Uh, right. <laughs> but, but honestly, it never really crossed my mind. Um, yeah, I can remember when I was a kid, if you're <laughs> I'm going to kind of age myself here because uh, I don't think that these things are in fashion anymore. But I used to get these little um, statues of like uh, famous composers, like right. I had, like a little Bach, you know, statue and a Beethoven one and a Brahms one and, you know, and kind of collect those. Right. Piano students often get those. I don't know. Yeah. The recitals. I don't know if they even make them anymore, but there were no women. <laughs> right. Um, and again, you know, um, there were no, um, you know, different racial, you know, representations of composers either. And that's right. another problem <laughs> yeah. in, in uh, our narrative, I right. believe. Um, so I think that my experience of coming to an age where, you know, I contemplating and going, wow, when I was a kid, I didn't know about these people and, yeah. and so um i think that kind of motivated me to sure to want to um to want to tell her story and and bring some light to her yeah um and hopefully um i know that orchestras and opera companies and also and choirs and they're all discovering ethel smith's music now mm. and programming it um but you know, it's been a long time coming. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. It's good that there are people like you who, who see that gap, you know, and I'm reminded of, you know, that, that kid's movie that says, you know, see a need, fill a need. And that's exactly, mm -hmm. you know, what you did. There, there's mm -hmm. a need for more representation of women in classical music. And so mm -hmm. let's just take care of that. So that is awesome mm -hmm. that you were able to do that. Um, so in the in the writing world, <clears throat> I'm going to shift the conversation a little bit from music to writing. And so in the writing world, we're hearing a lot right now in the in the trenches that picture book biographies are a hard sell right now. Mm -hmm. So do you have any insight for that? And for my viewers and friends who are in the trenches at this point, if if we are writing picture book biographies, do you have any advice for how we can make them really stand out and and for people to take notice in kind of a tough market. Yeah, I think I've heard that too. Um, in fact, when I was submitting Rise Up for a song, I heard that. Um, okay. But so here's my first piece of advice. Don't listen <laughs> to the naysayers. Yep. Um, if, if you feel like your story needs to be out in the world, and I felt like Ethel's does. And yeah. so, and I felt that way about my first one um, book too. And so I felt like, no, this is a good story. And I, it's been through my writer's group, my critique group, it's been, you know, worked on and worked on and revised and revised. And um, so that would be my first thing is like, if you personally think that it needs to be out in the world, then, then keep, submitting it and keep right. trying but my suggestions to um would be to um uh it takes the right fit 
you know, in a, in a publisher or an agent. Right. Um, and so it's just a matter of kind of finding that person. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll tell you a little story about rise up with a song when I, I would say another piece of advice would be, I'm a member of the society of um, children's book writers and illustrators, um, mm -hmm. Skibway. Mm -hmm. And that has helped me so much because okay. this book, I had gone to a workshop. It was an online workshop. And part of the workshop was, uh, was you could submit your manuscript to an agent, to the person who was presenting mm -hmm. an agent at this workshop. And he or she would read it and, and um, possibly pick it up or give you feedback. Right. And so I took advantage of that and I, I carefully selected the one person that I thought might like it because she herself was a musician. Right. Um, and uh, cause she wrote that in her bio and I'm like, okay, she's a musician. She's, uh -huh. she's going to get this. Yeah. And I am, um, the thing is when I submitted it, I didn't hear back. I didn't hear back. I didn't hear back. And I thought, oh, I paid $250 for this workshop. I'm going to keep being persistent. Yeah. So I had to nudge her nicely. So it's okay to nudge if you promise something. Right. Okay. I had to nudge her, I think two or three times. Wow. And I thought I wasn't going to get anywhere. And I thought this yeah. was a waste of time. And I was getting kind of grumpy about it because I did my end, you know, yeah. and I was yeah. like, okay, what's going on? And then all of a sudden, the third nudge, I got something back right away. And it wasn't just a, I'm sorry, I'm busy. I'm so busy. I couldn't get to this. It was, yes, I'm sorry. It took me so long, but here's what I think of your manuscript. And she gave me, she loved the story. She loved the, um, Ethel Smythe. <laughs> she, right, you know? right. And, um, but she said, if you want, she said, I can't take it on and help you improve it. Um, I just have too many projects going and it's not what I'm looking for right now. Um, timing's not quite right for me, but mm -hmm. here's what I suggest you do. And she just kind of laid out all the changes she thought I should make. So I thought, you know what? She knows what she's talking about. I'm going yeah. to give it a try. And so I made those changes, put it back through my writer's group. And then when every, and I couldn't think of anything else to do, that's when I submitted it again mm -hmm. to a different publisher this time. Um, and that picked up like, wow. Yeah. So I would say that if you could find those people who are like willing to look at your manuscript and give you feedback, who have, you know, the agents are, are really, they know what's selling and what's not, but it doesn't mean that because someone says, oh, well, the market's flooded, we won't look at this. Don't listen to those people because I, I get told that too. <laughs> right, right. And, and I do think that um, another author friend of me, tell, a friend of mine who writes a lot of picture book biographies, she's kind of in the same boat. And she's, you know, she's like, I think it's the market's going to turn around just mm -hmm. right now. It's, it's kind a of tough. It's a tough market, I think, for everything right now, just mm -hmm. in general. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was. I was looking at um, Twitter today and Jennifer Mark Sol Solway <clears throat> had posted some um, stats and that she had gotten in like over over a thousand query. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm not I shouldn't say the numbers because I don't remember. But it was like yeah. a ridiculous number of queries that she's gotten in the past year. And mm -hmm. she had signed four. You know? Yeah, it's I really mean, hard. Yeah. And and she was um, saying, you know, not to be discouraging about the numbers. She said, I really want to be encouraging, but just know that this is the level, you know, yeah, of things that are, it that is. are happening. Um, I have another suggestion, though, to, ha to yeah. make your manuscript stand out if you're writing a picture book bio. I, I think what made Ethel Smythe, uh, I think what made the publisher pick that one up is Ethel had two different things going on here. She had not only the composing, okay, she's breaking barriers, she broke barriers for women in right. uh, classical music by composing, but she also was a suffragist. Right. And, and so she had this dual thing going. Mm -hmm. And when my book was picked up um, by the publisher, I was told that 
the marketing person at the publisher thought that uh, because of the suffra uh, suffragette piece, yeah. that it would be easily mar marketed. Yeah. And so I think if, you know, so I would say try to find that extra layer yep. of um, who you're talking about because, or who you're writing about, um, because I think that really helped. Yeah. Those are great tips. Um, so, um, but you know, it's hard, it's hard to find. Um, and you know, there's also my, my story, my own story. Right. And so there's certain people that I, I can't write about, <laughs> right. Um, right. because you know, you want to tell your own, uh, story, but, um, anyway, that might be helpful. To yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. So talk to us a little bit about what is coming for you. What are you working on right now? Do you have another picture book bio coming? Do you have anything? Well, I, I have, well, I have <laughs> another picture book bio that I'm working on. Okay. Um, but I'm trying to <clears throat> diversify a little bit now and see if I can do some other things because okay. I do know how hard it is to get a manuscript picked up. <laughs> yeah. So I don't want to, I'm trying to like, kind of pivot a little bit and try some other things. So um, I have a uh, second thing that I'm, my publisher and I are talking about, my current publisher, who um, um, I can't really talk about what it is, but it does have a classical music um, theme Connection, to it. Yeah. And then, but the, then the third thing that I'm working on is um, completely different. And it's a middle grade um, novel about, um, it has, uh, it's actually, I'm writing it with my sister. Oh, interesting. <laughs> who, yeah, who's also, um, well, she's not, she's not published yet, but she's, she's working on it. Um, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, so it's, it's more based on um, some things that happen in our childhood. Right. Um, but it's fiction. Um, okay. But, and it does have some music sprinkled in there because actually, one of the characters is based on me. <laughs> right. <laughs> and one and another character is based on her. So um so yeah, so those are the three things right now that I'm um toying with, but I don't have anything in the contract phase. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, hopefully you'll have some good, not so vague publishing news in the near future. We can we can hope for that. <laughs> yeah, I hope. I just think it's, you know, it's just you know, even if you have one or two books out, it's still, you know, work, work, work and try to, you know, yeah. um, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. We hear that all the time and you know, the rejections don't stop just because you get a, a publishing deal. And I mean, there's, no. there's a lot, yeah, there's a lot to keep, to, to keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you've got some great things in the works and we look forward to, um, more books. Um, Diane has offered a picture book critique. Is that right? That's what we decided. That's right. yeah. yeah. A picture book critique for um, a picture book of around 500 words, I think we said. Does that sound right? That's fine. Okay. Um, that's pretty much the market standard right now. So yeah, so 500. I mean, under a thousand for sure. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Picture book bios. If you do have that, they do tend to go a little over. That's right. right. Because yeah. there's a lot of information now. Oh, here's a trick though. Maybe you already know this. This is what I do. I, the word count, you know, is so low to get in. I mean, we're talking about a person's life and there's a lot, yeah. to, but you know, back matter is, yeah, that's where I put my stuff, timelines and, you know, right. and the stuff that I can't fit in the story goes mm -hmm. in the back matter. But and that's also really good too, because for it, for those, especially I think for picture book biographies, they're a great segue into the school market. Mm -hmm. And so when you have those pieces in there, like specifically timelines and tables and charts and mm -hmm. things like that, make it even better for teachers to have really windows in to be able to use that in their classrooms. Right, right. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, it is possible to do a picture book biography that um packs in i i call it just gleaning you know, like you yeah. glean the things that make a good story arc that somehow brings out the person's personality yeah, yeah. um uh, yeah. and thinking scenes 
Uh -huh. Lincoln scenes. Um, is this going to make a good scene if I put this in here? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's more excellent advice. Man, author, my author friends, you guys are racking up the tips today with Diane. This is awesome. <laughs> so, and then a critique offered on top of that. So make sure that um, that you leave a comment on the blog. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you head over to the blog, um, leave a comment there on the blog, and we will choose a winner to get um, a critique from Diane. And you can tell she is full of a wealth of knowledge and great tips that you've already gotten um, from her. So, and also I always like to remind um, the folks that are tuning in to please support our authors in whatever ways you can um, beyond, of course, they all want you to buy their buy the book. The book is beautiful, by the way. We haven't really talked about it, but the book is absolutely beautiful. The illustrations are beautiful. The mm -hmm. words are beautiful. The topic is absolutely amazing. Um, all the things that Ethel Smythe did, those little bits and pieces of her personality um, that Diane's done a great job of bringing into the story. And then all the musical content, which of course we love here on PB Jams, but um, there's just so much there to love and lots of layers, like she said, and then additional back matter. So tons of great reasons to buy the book. If you can't buy it, um, then please request it from your library um, and have them to order it, your school library, your public library. Make sure you do a review on Amazon or Goodreads if you take a read and enjoy it, and I know that you will. So make sure you support the authors in those ways and also just word of mouth. I mean, you know, the best advertisement we can give any time for anything is um, just letting somebody know that we read it and that we loved it. So I'm telling you, I've read it and I loved it. So I hope that you will take a look at it too um, and, and support Diane in all those wonderful ways and keep your eye out because she has more excellent mm -hmm. stuff coming. Anything you want to share, Diane, before we close out? Um, well, I feel I don't like to. OK, I just I want to tell you that the book just got a Kirkus Star review. Woohoo! Yay! And, and, you know, I don't like to talk about my book. I don't like to <laughs> just put all that out there, but I just for the book's sake, I want to I want to say that um, it just got that. So that that's huge. I think. Yeah, that's a big celebration. So I think it's going to do well. And um, yeah. yeah, and um, I'm just, I'd be happy to answer questions anytime if anyone has any more other questions you want to ask or. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. All right, guys. Well, PB Jams, friends, we will see you next time for PB Jams. And in the meantime, let the music keep playing and have a great week. See you next time. All right, Diane, that is a wrap for that part. I hope I didn't forget anything important that I needed to give you a chance to say. No, I think you were that at all. Okay, good. <laughs> I feel like I rambled on and on, but <laughs> no, I think it was it was really, really good stuff. And and again, you know, the 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 kind of running theme that comes bubbling to the surface. And I think for this one, you know, it's gonna be really it's always interesting to see who's going to benefit the most from these different interviews, because sometimes um, it's, you know, parents and there'll be little parenting bits and pieces, or it'll be a, a book that's just perfect for parents to read to their kids, you know, or it'll be for music teachers. And there's just so much content that's just perfect for the music classroom. Um <clears throat> And then, you know, for years, it was it was just so nice to have a really heavily author focused one that'll that'll really and that's probably really my biggest um portion of my audience right now are people like me that are mm -hmm. working on picture books and and trying you know to get published and so I think that's going to be really fabulous for them wonderful good, good yeah. stuff great tips <laughs> I love that um yeah and if you think of any additional tips so I usually have a little section and you may have already seen it. Forgive me. I, I've had two interviews this week and I'm getting ready for the program and the farm is open and I'm working and I've got a big reading event coming up in two weeks. So I've got a lot of stuff jangling in my head. Yeah. Um, but if you have not already sent me, if you could send me a few tips, it may be some of the ones that you just shared um, on the video. Oh, right. Or yeah. if you have some additional ones that you want to send. And it could be about sure. writing in general. Um, or it could be specific to uh, PBS. Yes. Bio. 
how many tips do you want? Does it just maybe three or four? Um, yeah. However you, you know, some people write me like a thesis <laughs> and some oh. people shoot me a quick, um, message with like uh, three little bullet points and yeah so i i'm gonna put right after we're finished here i'm gonna email you um some things that i didn't talk about that i could have talked about just now <laughs> oh, perfect yeah that would be great yeah yeah and i'll include those in the written part of the of the episode T tips for writers who want to get published yep yeah. yep that's the that's the basic focus mm -hmm. okay Yes, and I have your episode to air <clears throat> on eleven ten, and also on eleven seventeen. So that'll oh, be nice. right before your launch date. So that should work out really well. Okay, um, my marketing person was asking when it would go so that she can. I don't know. Talk it up, maybe or do something it with it. I don't yeah. know. So, um, is there like? Do I just, um, I'll just look for it. I'll just, I'll find it. I'll tag, are you, are you on Twitter? I can't yeah, I'm on Twitter. Twitter. Yeah, I thought that's where we connected. <clears throat> I will tag you when I post it. Okay. Um, but it'll be, it'll be that, usually lately it's been Thursdays, um, you okay. know, later on Thursdays when I actually get uh -huh. it finished. Uh -huh. And um, I've been posting in two parts. So the first week will kind of be, uh, more heavily the author part. And so uh -huh. it'll be this interview and it'll be all the information about your book and your sites and your social um, media. I'll pull a song and it's going to be the, the suffragette song, the, the March. I've already got it pulled. March of the Women. Oh, yeah. 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 So yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll highlight that. <clears throat> I've got a few different versions, so I'll have to look back and see. Um, the others will be I always put a YouTube playlist and a Pinterest board where I put a bunch of things that are nice. relative to that. So those will go out the second week, along with okay. some teacher tips for regular classroom teachers and for music teachers. Um, and I, if I run across any additional links that are really good for families to bring it in, um, then wow. I'll do that. So That's awesome. You do yeah. a lot. You do a lot, I, a lot. I do. Yeah. But it's, wow. this was my dream of what, and it was funny because when I first started, I had talked with um, an author and I had asked her if she wanted to be, you know, one of the first people that I interviewed and she's, and, and I hadn't started yet. It was like right before I was, I was launching. And so she's like, well, what kind of stuff? And I'm like, okay, well, so I haven't actually started yet, but it's, it's starting on in February. You know, this was early in February mm -hmm. or maybe January, even when I was talking with her. And um, I said, but here's what I want to do. I want to do this and this and this and this and this and this. And, this. and she goes, oh, you know what? Maybe <laughs> I'll just kind of sit back and see if you can get all that done. Because that seems like an awful lot. <laughs> after, so yeah, it, it, she she was really not sure I was going to be able to pull it off. And so a couple of weeks after I, I had done a couple of episodes, um, she she messaged me back. She said, you know what? You pulled it off. I don't know how you did that, but yeah, I'd love wow. to do an interview. <laughs> so it um, wow. it's a lot, but it, it's what I wanted it to be. And I hope at some point, you know, my audience is still small right now, but I'm really hoping at some point that it's just really going to bring, you know, you were talking about that musical passion and the writing passion. And for me, this is where it happens, right? Mm -hmm. Um it's the teaching and the writing and the reading and the music all coming together mm -hmm. um, and, and being able to support all those, all those areas um, and bringing them together. And I, I'm, my hope is that it's just a win-win for everybody, for you authors, that it, you know, ups the people who are going to encounter your book that maybe wouldn't otherwise, mm -hmm. that it's going to be used in classrooms that it wouldn't have been with, without this little nudge. And that for authors, it's going to give them some insight and some feedback that they wouldn't have gotten otherwise. And that for mm -hmm. classroom teachers and music teachers, it's going to give them lots of ways that they can actually take a book and, and use it in their classroom. So, nice. I mean, that's the hope. And then, you know, I always do a little nod to the whole inspiration for PBJ. And so I always include a little peanut butter and jelly snack recipe. <laughs> oh, nice. I love peanut butter. <laughs> yeah. So it's always, I even had, I had one author who said, you know, I make these killer peanut butter and jelly cookies. Do you want the recipe? And I'm like, heck yeah, I want the recipe. That's <laughs> in this episode. So 
it's it's really been fun to see all the ways that it just kind of you know plays out and it's been a lot of fun I have cut back and I'm I'm doing um I'm not doing an episode every week I've I've kind of spread it out over two weeks because it was getting a bit a bit much for everything else that I'm that I'm juggling and and I still need to find time for my own writing and I I was was gonna say I was gonna ask you what what are you working what are you working on yeah, so I, I have about 60 manuscripts right now that I've written that are at some some place along the continuum from rough draft to polished. I I pitched about 10, eight or 10 manuscripts yesterday for PB pitch, which of course I didn't get any likes. I mean, it's it's an ocean of, of beautiful pitches. I mean, they were all so wonderful and lovely. Mm-hmm. And there's so many fantastic stories out there just waiting to be, you know, to be born. But a lot of mine do have music connections. Um, and I find that after I started PB Jams, I started aiming my my manuscripts more in the direction of some musical nods. So I have um, a nonfiction piece that I wrote about the concert for plants in Barcelona during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Mm. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but it was, Mm. um, it was really, really amazing. It Mm. was a a Spanish artist. Um, so that's just a lyrical, just a little lyrical account of the actual, um, concert and the, Mm. uh, yeah, that sounds good. It's really, it's really sweet. I think it's gotten really good feedback from my critique groups, but I just haven't had any takers Mm. yet. Um, and then I have a couple of musical retellings of folk tales. Mm-hmm. I've got the Rock and Roll Troll and Goldie Notes and the Three Bears Band, um, <laughs> where she's exploring musical elements. I love um, it. Trying to find that music that's just right, not too loud, not too soft, <laughs> that's not, too right. not too slow. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. And then, you know, there's a few others with musical connections. And then there's some, like you were saying, that are just childhood encounters and memories or things that are inspired like mm-hmm. you said fictional accounts um but yeah. inspired by things that happened in my childhood and um yeah. you know some humor um some a lot of intergenerational um that tends to show up in mine a lot nature tends to show up uh-huh. a lot those are things that I'm that really close to my heart yeah, yeah. well it sounds like you have a lot of good stuff going and just one thing I'm when I when I write you this email, I'm the, it's going to have the words patience and perseverance at the top. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I didn't talk about um, when I was talking about tips. Um, it's really, yeah. That's the most important <laughs> part, right? Yeah. Well, and musicians, we know how to do that. Yeah, we know how to be persistent in our practice. You know, when I'm practicing my music and I'm like, oh, I don't have this spot yet. I gotta do it again. You know. Yeah. The revising, you know. Well, and I think we also know how to delay that gratification, right? Because we know mm-hmm. that the effort we're putting in right now is at some point gonna come to fruition. And it's that's gonna, right. Yeah, it's gonna be a lovely product someday, even though we're not quite there yet. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, also honestly, it's a group project. I didn't say that either. I could have um it's not just the off a picture book isn't just the words, yeah. right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, although it starts in your head, but it's yeah. it becomes it very quickly becomes a group project once it gets picked up by a publisher, and then well, and even before that, like one of the things yeah. I had a really hard time when I first came into the writing community. <clears throat> so I've always loved to write, but when I came into the writing community, and they're like, "Well, you need to get feedback, and you need to," and and then I'm like, "But." then it's not mine anymore. It's somebody else's and they, that's right. you know, that's their <laughs> idea. And I mean, I still sometimes like some of the pitches yesterday that got some of the, um, you know, no agent likes, but just people, you know, responding. And it's like, you know, that's really not my pitch. That's really Darla's pitch. I mean, she helped me to craft, you know, that pitch or Sarah helped me with that pitch. That's not really my, pitch. you know, so I still kind of struggle a little bit with it, but it is, it's, um, it's definitely I, I I laugh and say in my blog I've said quite a few times who knew writing was a team sport right yeah exactly and you know you don't have to take someone else's um, right. idea but <laughs> um, but you know oftentimes just more heads are better <laughs> you know and if you can make it your your own voice right and you like um 
you know, that's why we have editors that yeah. come in to yeah. the process. Um, and so, yeah, so um, it is fascinating. It's very much like music making. Um, yeah. Uh, in its process. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It is actually very much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for this time. I have mm -hmm. so much enjoyed chatting with you. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I hope we'll have a chance to connect again sometime. Yes, thank you so much. And um, I will, like I said, be as quickly as I can with that critique. Um, just shoot it my way. And, um, and uh, definitely Thanksgiving week. That's for sure. I'll have time. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, I can relate. But up until then, that. I'm kind of like, ah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's good to know it's not just me in that situation. Right no, now. it's getting to be too much. I, yeah. <laughs> not this. Yeah. This wasn't it. No, I it understand. Was, I get everything it. else around it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think when when my family decided to open up the farm this fall, like that really put a kink in my writing time, you know, because I've that weekends are my time because I teach, you know, Monday through Friday. Mm -hmm. And now I'm out on the farm su Saturday and Sunday. And so there's like, very like I'm really squeezing in evening sessions and yeah, yeah trying to get some stuff and it's such a busy season for writing like there's so many good things happening there's all these little contests and mm. all the you know people are open and they're getting ready to close for the mm -hmm. you know for the winter and it's like okay I need to get some queries out and I need to get this contest and I need to get this written and yeah so it's it's a busy season I think in every single area mm -hmm. yeah so we'll get past this and then we'll Maybe have a little yeah. more time. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. Probably not. Right. But maybe. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Diane. Well, it was great to talk with you. Thank Best you. wishes with the book. And we'll get um, as many people hooked up with it as we possibly can. Thank you, Ken. Uh, thank you so much, Tanya. And um, I will be emailing you right now. <laughs> okay. Sounds okay. great. Thanks so much. All right. Have yeah. a great night. Bye-bye.